start the recording and then we can talk officially. We're on. I posted the link to the minutes in our document. So feel free to add yourself to the list of attendees. And I'm looking right now for the email be shared after the session with the notes. Oh, here, I think I found it. So I'm going to add that to our meeting minutes. Thank you. Okay, great. So, um, uh, I just made up an agenda, which everybody can approve or dis or modify. Uh, let's see. Number one on the agenda, um, I said let's let's chat about what happened last week, lessons learned, uh, takeaways, next steps. Uh, number two. Um, we said for the next phase of work, there's gonna be two main things that we do. One is to have a live uh, demonstration of our value metrics. Uh, that could be an auger, that could be a Grimoire, that could be whatever. Uh, second thing we said we were gonna do is set up a steering committee and we've got some action items uh, for that to discuss um, after our meeting last week. Actually, we've got some really interesting people who have raised their hand and said, yeah, we want to participate. So let's talk about that a little bit. We can talk about the best way to engage with these folks. Is there anything else on our agenda for this week that we should discuss? Then let's dig in. Um, okay, so talking about the Open Source Summit uh, North America, yeah, our our, uh, our session that, that we had, um, uh, our, our panel session, I guess, which was sort of refactored to be a birds of a feather or something like that, uh, I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, and I thought the participants were great and I thought the discussion was great. I don't know, is there any, is there any other um, sort of insight or feedback, pro and con, about that? So I think it was a good way to engage everyone and hear what everyone was looking for in these metrics. And Matt did a great job of distilling it into um, goals because we have the goal question metric approach. Um, I think to move this forward, we might look at these different goals in turn and figure out what metrics can support each of these goals. And by following this approach, we make sure that our metrics align with the goals that resonate with the people from the birds of a feather. And I think that is one way we can leverage the, um, the birds of a feather session to improve our metrics. That sounds uh, great to me. Um, so when we, when we start talking about metrics version two, I guess we, back. we come back to those uh, 
I guess we'd come back to those goals and make sure that our version two metrics align with those goals. Does that sound right, Georg? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll make sure they align with them or even come up with new metrics within each goal. Yeah. Is there, is there anything to be done beyond that? Um, so I had reached out to all the non value working group members who were in the workshop and I offered them a copy of our meeting minutes. So I got one response, two responses from people who want to continue the conversation who are interested in the meeting minutes. So I'll follow up with them. That's I don't know great. if they'll have time to actually join our calls, but I think that goes also into your next or the, I don't think we have this on here right now with um, the steering committee. So making sure that we keep people engaged. Yeah. Right. So I thought the participation was just really good and really high enthusiasm. So those, those are kind of the takeaways for me. So I guess that's all there is to be said about Open Source Summit North America. Uh, so let's see, next item uh, on the agenda um, for the next phase of work, we said one of our goals is to have a live uh, working demo of our value metrics. Uh, that could be in Augur, that could be in Greenmore, that could be, I guess, in whatever system we've got enthusiasm uh, to do the implementation. Uh, so I'd like to talk about that. What's our process? What is the state of the tooling? How should we go about getting some, some live demos of value metrics? Um, just going, looking at your, or what are, I forget, I forget, Dandy even which one we published. So bringing that up. Okay. I mean, certainly, um, I have uh, one of our Google Summer of Code students is finishing up the implementation of the labor investment metric. Uh, I think project velocity, did we release that one? I believe so, yeah. We had three. Yeah. Uh, project velocity, labor investment, and something related to living wage. I can't remember exactly yeah. what it was. So the project velocity is I mean, I think that's just a question of how we want to represent that. Um, like there's a nice reference implementation listed here from CNCF on how they do it. I think that's a, that's a really helpful visualization. I think trying to, I think the biggest question is one, if I'm looking at uh, value, you know, Grimoire Lab and Augur all have the, the data required for project velocity. And I think it's a question of how we want to operationalize the logarithmic scales for code changes and the number of issues and reviewers and different committers. I think, I think the hardest challenge for us both is going to be identifying or, or framing on the fly. What is, what are you defining as internal or external? Because I think different enterprises are going to use different criteria for, making those assessments. And in fact, most often are gonna know who their contributors are internally and just feed that into a system, right? Yes, that's the, that's the sort of feeds into the notion of a parameterized network. Of right. So, um, yeah, we're, I mean, I'm sure Grimoire Lab is keen to produce a demo as are we so um we've been we've been focusing on just ease of deployment so that it's easy for people to deploy and making a good deal of progress there um so 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Georg, is anything to say about Grimoire Lab and where, where you guys are at? With regards to the value metrics, I don't think we have um, started any work on it, but you're absolutely right. The foundational data is in the system. It's a matter of building out visualizations for the data. I don't believe we have parameterized metrics currently supported. So that is a discussion we can have on Tuesday with the Grimoire Lab working group on uh, how to do that. And we were talking before of just exporting the data and doing it in Excel spreadsheet. And I know Grimoire Lab exports all the data as CSV files. So yeah. we can support that kind of analysis. Yeah, we provide JSON and CSV dumps, so. Yeah. So, um, to me, what would be what would be useful would be just to get a, a super minimal, super crude instance that we. I can need to. Uh, sorry, I'm getting new carpet. The carpet is just arrived. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I uh, and I know there's a um, there is an instance of Augur, uh, value to Augur Labs. Um, that I O something like that. Um, Sean, what would be the what would be the right timing, and what would be the best way to to start hacking on that? Is that something that you'd like to do? yourself with students would you like part would you like participants uh, we'd love open source participants and i think the i mean right now if you download auger we're pretty close to having it um be something with the install script that just does all the work for you i think where where it's not quite there yet is um i want it to be a web page that you can just put configuration into mm -hmm. and i want it to handle the implementation, for example, of if you don't have a Postgres database or access to one of installing that locally so that people can really just play with it okay. um, and enter their repositories. That's the direction um, that we are headed. So uh, right now I can configure one for you. In fact, we've got a couple that I spent a good, actually I spent a good deal of time this week sort of working out um, there's a couple of uh, uh, nits with our Nginx implementation. There's just a few things that end up being different than a development server mapping in the Nginx, and I sorted those things out uh, earlier this week. Sean, would it? So, Sean, would you prefer to to wait to to get to kind of a like a release milestone before? you engage around value metrics, would it be more efficient? I have, that well, I have, well, I have Parth. Parth is actually one of our Google Summer of Code students who's continuing to work on the project. And he's, his project right now is imp implementing the, the same, um, it, it basically impl implementing a Kokomo algorithm. And then we're gonna use, we've got a couple of organizations that have actually used Kokomo to evaluate labor investment um, and so we're going to have access to their parameterizations of mm -hmm. Kokomo. So there's a stock implementation that I have piloted for a couple of people, but it's been very, you know, Sean Goggins running the code against the repo and then loading it into the database with a CSV at the command line for 6,000 repositories. And what Parth is working on is making that process fairly transparent. Um, so that's just another worker inside of Augur that loads data. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that does that. So working on that, having part working on that isn't distracting at all. It actually makes it, makes it so that we know the data is going to be there um, mm -hmm. in the form that you would need. And then building a front end, like I think, are you offering to contribute to Augur, Andy? Because we would love that. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I can contribute, you know, in a lightweight way. Um, mm -hmm. Like, for example, I, if there's code that you'd like to have a guinea pig to go through the install process, I can do that. I can file bugs. Our dev um, branch, like if, if you wanted to go through an install process on our dev branch right now, sure. Um, the only thing I would, I, I would need to update the readme, but 
the thing I can tell you here on this call is there's a file called auger install.sh that you need to run. Yeah. Um, our current readme doc in the dev branch, I haven't updated. The current readme drives you through a lot that we've now put into that install okay. file. So um, that, that I, can, I may have that readme updated by the end of today. Okay. So um, over the weekend, then maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll clone the dev branch mm -hmm. yeah. and I'll just start iterating and, and trying to, you know, hack my way through the install process and I'll file, I'll file issues and, and that'll be a way for, you know, for us to start engaging if, if that sounds good. That sounds awesome. That sounds really, really awesome. Okay. Okay, so that'll be our uh, that'll be our process. Excellent. And uh, when Georg comes back um, from his uh, carpet duty, then I guess you know I'd like to I'd like to, if possible, get two implementations. I think there'll be some nice cr cross fertilization, and we can learn from that. Yeah, I agree. So we'll see we'll see what he has to say about that. Um, when he gets back. I'm assuming, yeah, he's just getting them started and telling them what rooms to put the carpet in. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe that's obvious. Yeah. Uh, so. so the other thing to um, to discuss while, while Georg is uh, working on carpet is um, we said for our next phase of work, we want to set up a steering committee sort of with with two main areas of participation. One is open source program office. And I think we've got a ton of interest from open source program office. And the other is from economic experts. Yeah, and we had a great economist talk at the, at the workshop there. Were you in that room when, yeah, that was a keynote. You were probably yeah. there. You're talking about Yana. Yeah, Yana was, I thought she did outstanding. Um, I, I agree a uh, thousand percent. So, so Yana would be um, potentially a member of the steering committee of uh, Malvika, Don, if, if Malvika has got time, I'd, I'd really love That'd to, be to have her to have her participation on the steering committee. And then we've got, um, we've got really strong interest from TD Ameritrade, a uh, guy who's got, you know, visibility into traders and economists and, and things of that nature. Uh, so I will follow up with, um, with them uh, later on this afternoon. And, uh, you know, there's, there's potentially other activity. Uh, there's some folks at Linux Foundation that are interested in going in and, and doing this kind of e economic view with technology consumers, large organizations, technology consumers. And so it's very exploratory, but, um, but there's interest there as well. And um, so a question for the group is, as, as we um, start engaging in these discussions, what is the right way to keep everybody sort of synchronized and and so they feel like they're in the loop. They know the, the status of discussions, that sort of thing. Uh, my proposal is that I publish a, just a Google spreadsheet with a list of all our contacts that, that show the names of people that are prospects for the steering committee groups. And just to note with the status of discussions, are they interested, are they not interested? Um, and just do something as simple as that. Would that be sufficient for everybody? Are, are there other uh, proposals that people have for, you know, how do we keep everybody in the loop as, as we go about recruiting these steering committee members? Um, I, I don't have any specific suggestion. I'd be curious what Don might think. I think, I think independence this is important. Yeah, um, I I think that um, expanding the steering committee is basically a good idea um, in order to bring in more 
some more experts. Um, what's the status of the Sloan Foundation project, John? Um, we're still engaged in it. Matt and I are funded by that project through the, you know, the end of this academic year. Okay. So, um, so the status is good. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah. If, if there was some kind of, um, an engagement that Malvika could be brought in on, um, whether it's a company engagement or um, some other kind of, of defined role, I think that would help help justify bringing. But it, it would help justify it to her because she's she's of course trying to get a new company launched. Yeah, uh, um, I didn't I didn't know that she was trying to get a new company launched, but. Cool. Um, and by the way, maybe it would be useful to kind of recap what our the vision is, uh, or at least what we said it would be for the steering committee. Yeah. Well, real, real, real quick interjection. I'm looking at the meeting minutes, and all of the discussion I missed. I don't see any um, notes on what we were discussing. So I encourage everyone to please make sure we capture what we're discussing to preserve it and be able to reference it again. Will do. Now you can go. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, what we what we said uh, when we talked about the idea of the steering committee, we said the purpose of the steering committee is to, is to start getting outside views that go sort of above and beyond our area of expertise. We are collectively, you know, if I had to characterize us, I'd call us software people. I mean, that's, that's definitely, um, definitely is a descriptive term for me. And um, so it'd be, it would be nice in my opinion to have a point of view that, that uh, really reflects economic expertise that could come from an economist, that could come from somebody like an investment banker, an industry analyst, those sorts of things. And we said we wanted to, we want to make for steering committee participation, we want to make it extremely lightweight. So we're going to ask for just a few hours of involvement uh, twice a year which is which is going to ask them to give us feedback on our metrics and on our and on our plans as we go forward so we're going to try and make it real simple to and very lightweight to participate and we actually don't need a, a huge number of people i would like somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four people on the economic side and two to four people on the open source program office side and then we'll gauge our success. We'll see if it's useful. So that's that's what we're going for. <clears throat> uh, so I'll put together a spreadsheet, and you know I can I'll, I'll share that. Uh, I do have some notes that I'm putting together for TD Ameritrade, which is a small deck. And, uh, and a one pager to recruit an economist within the mayor trade. I'll, I'll share that with folks. And that's gonna go out uh, next week. Um, so I'm really excited that, you know, we do have uh, prospects that I think are excellent. You know, between Yana, Malvika, the TD Ameritrade guys, Linux Foundation guys, it's a nice place to start. And Georg, while you were gone, we, we talked about um, ways of building a metrics demo for Augur. And our technique is pretty much going to be, let's just start at ground zero and try and get the software installed. Um, what is the right way to engage with Grimoire to, to build a, a demo for value metrics? So the first recommendation I have is to join the Grimoire Lab working group session on Tuesday. It's always the hour before the weekly meeting. 
and that is where we have time to discuss these things on how to do this in Grimoire Lab. Okay. Sounds awesome. Yeah. And then the, the other thing we can do is we have the chaos.bechurch.io installation of Grimoire Lab. And we can go in there and play with the data and just build visualizations for ourselves. Now, that cannot be saved unless you have a login. But if you need a login, I can ask the right people to get one. So I'd like a login. Okay. I'll issue a request. Yeah, but basically, so let's say we want to, um, here, let, let me open this up. So where do we have yes, pictures.io? Do you want so I don't know if this is useful. If you want to start looking at um Primal Lab, I can show you how to find the data in the dashboard and stuff. That'd be that great. Useful to people? No, let's let's do it. Okay. Then here, let's share my desktop. Do you see the um, dashboard? Yes. So the, the address to get here is, um, is chaos.bechurch.io. Okay. So if you want to follow along, you can just go there and follow along. Where do I have the chat? There. I'll also post it in the chat. Okay. So let's figure out what metric we wanted to look at. Um, chaos community slash metrics. Uh, I'm still struggling with uh, with Mac metrics. So value metrics. Labor investment, is that, shall we start here? That'd be a great place to start. Okay. So here we say sample filter and visualizations, internal versus external contributors. So what we can do is um, we have here for data sources, let's say issues, pull requests, or Git, and Git is what we think of as um, commits. So at the top we have the menu, and then we can look here. And we have already some visualizations for organization we can filter by, let's say, want to know all of the Missouri, University of Missouri contributions, then we can filter here. Or we want to know everyone else except Missouri, then we just negate this filter. And you, at the top, you see now the filter is red. 
So it's fairly easy to start exploring the data like this. And for a number of commits, we have um, here are tables that already show number of commits organized around repositories, around organization, around authors, or around time. So here we have it around time. And there, there is a way to export the data. And you might have to be logged in for that. I saw it the other day. Options, share, sync, options. So here, this table, for example, has an export, but I know we can also export the visualization. I have to look up where, where to find this export. So if you say yeah. raw, then you get a CSV file. Awesome. So it's it's a matter of building the right table with the right categorization of the numbers that you want. And then you can filter in here whatever data you want. And then you get the, um, no, I don't think, I'm gonna share my, full screen, and then you get the CSV file. And this is uh, some match program, but you can load it into Excel just the same. Yep. So our version one X, uh, implementation is going to be, you know, this plus a, a readme file. And the readme file is going to say, you know, go to this page, log in as this user, click on this widget, export CSV to your spreadsheet and then plug in your own plug in your own labor rates and that's going to be our minimum viable labor metric yep that sounds about right and I know auger works very similar to this yep So that's going to be great. So uh, I think we can say mission accomplished for today. Is there, is there uh, anything else that people want to discuss? I don't have anything. No. I don't have anything. Okay, well, let's make sure we got, um, we have our note, notes up to date and then we can wrap it up. Uh, let's see. Um, I add an action item for me to post the meeting minutes on the mailing list so that we get them distributed. I think we're good. 
Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, so you guys have a great weekend. Um, we'll see you online. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, Kevin. Hey, what's up? I forgot that I had carpet being installed in the house. Oh, gotcha. They just uh, came here 15 minutes ago. Okay. Um, Reschedule? I, I was thinking about asking them if we can, if I can leave mm -hmm. and then come back. It's probably okay. I, I don't think I need to be here. No. Uh, why don't you ask him real quick and then uh, I can either stay on the line or you can just text me. Yeah, I'll text you. Okay. All right, let me know. Okay, I'll let you know. All right, bye. Yeah, bye.